Bonjour, mes amis. I am so excited to be joining you all today for World Frock Tales. How cool is this online event? And how cool have been have the projects been leading up to it as well? I know I've been super inspired by everyone's talks and DIYs this week, um, and so I hope that you have as well. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brittany and I am the pattern maker behind Untitled Thoughts, which is a sustainably focused indie pattern design brand. And today I have a fun little DIY scrap busting project for you all, the Bijou Beret. <laughs> So I designed this particular pattern after creating my first wool coat and realizing that I had a ton of leftover scraps that I didn't know what to do with. They were really oddly shaped and um, they were too big to toss but too small to like do anything with or so I thought. So this is how the Bijou came to be. For this project you will need the Bijou Beret pattern, which you can access for free at untitledthoughts.com. A scrap piece of sturdy wool. I've already pre-cut my fabric out. You'll also need lining fabric measuring the same amount. Some pins. A sewing machine and matching thread. Fabric scissors and snips an iron and ironing, ironing board, an ironing ham if you happen to have one, this is totally optional, a sewing needle, a hand sewing needle I should say, and a cup of coffee, tea, or water to keep you going. Alternatively, if you don't have any scrap wool or maybe you're allergic to it or you just don't like using wool as um, a major fiber in your projects, you can always use a sturdy woven material that is backed with a good interfacing. It should provide just enough structure to lend the same effect as a wool beret cap. So for this particular project, I'm not only going to show you how to sew your braid, but I'm also going to show you how to embellish it with some embroidery, um, just like this one right here. So for the embroidery part of this section, the supplies that you're going to need are one to three colors of embroidery floss, depending on how intricate you'd like your design to be, an embroidery hoop, an embroidery needle, some sort of washable marking tool such as a Frixion pen or Taylor's chalk, and then of course a embroidery design of some sort for your actual beret. There are plenty of free designs to choose from online, but in case you needed, I have included a printout in your Bijou PDF downloadable files as well. So the first thing we need to do for this project is download and print off our PDF files. Um, I'm going to breeze through this process rather quickly just to save on time, but if you need additional help with putting together your PDF files, feel free to head over to my blog. Um, I have a whole series dedicated to working with digital downloads. So we are going to begin our project with our embroidery first before ever starting to sew our beret together. This way, all of our little threads and all the loose ends um, get hidden inside the actual beret, creating a nice clean finish for our finished project. To start, pick a spot you would like to add your embroidered design. Make sure that you're not too close to your edge, your seam allowance edge, or to the center of your beret, which is where the stock is going to be sewn. So if you aren't sure exactly where your seam allowance is, feel free to grab a ruler and just mark it out. Our seam allowance for this project is half an inch. So I'm just going to go around the bottom edge of my beret and mark out half an inch so that I don't accidentally draw my embroidery design in my seam allowance because that would be a total waste. <laughs> It would just get sewn up into the hat and create a lot of extra bulk. 
and I'm only going to do the bottom edge because this is where I plan on putting my design. And I don't think that you can see it, but I did already mark the center, so I'm just going to remark it with my chalk. I had originally used my Frixion pen, but it's not showing up on camera, so I'm just going to redraw everything. All right, so now you're going to lightly draw your pattern out onto your beret using your favorite marking tool. Again, I love my Frixion pen, but it's not showing up, so I'm going to use my second favorite, which is Taylor's chalk. So I'm just going to lightly draw the outline of my embroidered design, and I'm making mine pretty big because I want it to make a statement. And I'm only doing the outline because it is um, chalk and chalk isn't as precise as a pen. So I'm just gonna do the outline and I'll just keep in mind what the actual design is supposed to look like in the end. So I'm just doing all the squiggly little branches right now. I think that looks about right. So once you've finished marking your design, we're just going to slide it into our embroidery hoop. So this comes in two parts, so you'll loosen up the first, take it off and set it to the side, and you're going to place your design over the embroidery hoop, making sure that you can actually like put this piece right back on top and it's going to be nice and tight might be a little too tight. So you might have to loosen your embroidery hoop just a bit more. There we go. So I'm going to put it on top and I'm going to tighten this. Oh. And you wanna make sure that your fabric is nice and tight. So mine's still a little loose right here. So I'm just going to pull it until it's nice and tight. That way we don't get any saggy designs. There we go. And then continue tightening. Eep. Perfect. And as you can see, I don't have my entire piece inside the embroidery hoop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have to embroider all of this bit and then move the entire piece up so that I can embroider the bottom bit. And that's like with any embroidery project that you're doing, usually it doesn't all fit inside the embroidery hoop. Now it's time to embroider. To start, pick a, um, one of the colors of embroidery floss that you'd like to work with first, and don't tangle it up like I just did. <laughs> um, you are going to pull out about enough that is about the length of your arm. You don't wanna do too much more than that, otherwise it starts to get tangled quite easily. And then, embroidery floss can actually be separated by its strands. So you're going to want to separate it out depending on how many strands you prefer working with at a, any given time. So for me, I like to work with about three strands at a time just because this is thin enough that it actually goes through my fabric relatively easily, but it's thick enough that you can see the design of the embroidery floss on your fabric. So next, you wanna take your embroidery needle and thread your floss through one end. Give it a nice tail just so it doesn't come undone. And then you're going to tie a knot at the other end. There we go. And then you're going to start to embroider. If you are using my embroidery template, I'm working with only three different stitches. The stem stitch, The straight stitch and the French knot.
pick a spot to begin on your embroidery and off you go. Even though embroidery is pretty simple in the fact that there aren't that many stitches being used to create the designs, it's still very time consuming. So keep that in mind when you start working on your embroidery project. You want to make sure that you're nice and comfortable and you're taking lots of breaks. There are loads of different stitches and techniques you can try and the internet is a great place for learning and just trying all kinds of new things. I really don't think that you can actually get embroidery wrong. If you don't like something, you can easily take it out and try again. And if you feel like something's missing, you can just play around with adding more colors and textures and stitches until you get something that you really love. It kind of reminds me of painting just with thread. So once you have your embroidery all finished, what you're going to want to do is take it out of the embroidery hoop. You do this by just unscrewing the top bit and removing it from the bottom. And you can set these two to the side. And if you want, you can also give this a nice little press so that you don't have this kind of circle ring left over from the embroidery hoop. What I would do is flip it over and maybe put like a damp cloth on top of it um, and then just give it a nice little steam all around. You don't wanna like rub your iron like this. You wanna press it down gently. That way you don't accidentally stretch out the circle of your beret. Once you have finished with your embroidery, I think it's time to reward yourself with a quick little break. Feel free to pause this video and go grab a glass of water, maybe do a quick stretch. You could even snag yourself a sweet treat. Um, I know I'm going to be sipping on some coffee in between this. Whenever you are ready and recharged, feel free to come back and we are going to dive into actually creating your beret. So the first step in working on our beret is going to be attaching the stock to the center of our beret pattern. Um, so the stock is just this small rectangular piece. So you may have a slightly wider piece if you're doing a cotton material or something like that, but I'm working with wool, so I have a very narrow piece. What you're going to do is you're going to um, turn it into a cylinder so overlapping the raw short edges by about a quarter of an inch and you can pin this in place so it looks kind of like this like a little circle yeah and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our needle and matching thread and we're going to stitch this closed and then we're going to stitch it right into the center of our beret pattern. So I'm going to bring out a piece of thread. I'm going to double it just because I don't like tying knots. So I like having the little, the little loop at the bottom so that at least the first knot is pretty much done for me. I'm going to thread my needle. And because I'm working with a wool, um, I it doesn't tend to fray, especially since this beret pattern isn't going to be going into the washing machine. If anything, I'll just spot clean it. Um, so when you work with wool and it doesn't fray, you don't actually have to finish off your edges. So what I'm gonna do is when I'm sewing, I'm just going to be looping around the bottom edge just so that I get a nice secure 
finish. But again, I don't have to worry about any of this fraying. Um, I just want to make sure that this looks as neat as possible. And I know that this is really small, so um, that, and it might be hard to see, um, but just remember that that means that no one else should be able to see if you accidentally make a mistake on your stitching, at least for this part. And it's on the top of your head, so who's up there anyway? <laughs> So I'm just going to go around and I'm doing the same on the inside. So if you want, if it's easier, you can flip your entire circle inside out and then stitch the exact same way that you did on the outside. Oop, it just likes to fly around there for me. And if you do find that you have wool and it's fraying um, or something like that, even though it tends not to, if you don't like the look of like the few small threads that you see, you can always um, use fray check. I personally don't like using fray check that often, um, but I know that there, are, if it extends the life of your garment, it's really, it's really helpful. I'll probably just go back. I can see mine is fraying just a little bit from agitation. Um, so I'll probably go back and like trim up these little bits and pieces. But again, who's at the top of my head? So who's looking up, up there? Um, so now that I have everything secured, I'm going to put this right on top of my little X mark. And I'm just going to secure this down with a couple more stitches. And you can go all the way through your fabric here. So I wanna just make sure that it's nice and tight on my beret so that it's not flying in the wind. <laughs> so I'll do a couple of stitches around the outside maybe a few in the center, really just kind of going with what the beret tells me it needs. It's kind of like when sewing on a button, you know, like I always just sew it until the button feels like nice and secure. And then I feel confident that it's going to be fine. So one side is down. I'll do this through the center a few times. Kind of meditative all this extra hand sewing isn't it oh look and see i accidentally caught my embroidery so i'm just going to snip that excess thread which i should have done before but i was just so darn excited i couldn't couldn't help myself just starting into like jumping into this project all right and i'm going to go to the other side and secure the stitches here so that my little stock doesn't move too much and I've seen a bunch of different tutorials online for like putting the stock on your beret. Um, there's different styles of stocks. So feel free to experiment with what you like um, and what like speaks to your personal style. There's no right or wrong here. We're just making some fun things with our extra fabrics. So I'm going to flip it over and tie a knot with my threads so that it's secure and doesn't come out. Ooh, I think it is secure. <laughs> Haven't even tied that thread off. And then just trim any excess with my little snips. And there you go. You have now successfully attached the stock to your beret. All right, so now we're going to get into actually attaching our main beret pattern piece to the bottom pattern piece. Um, so what we're going to do is you're going to put right sides together. And for me, it doesn't really matter because they both kind of um, look exactly the same. So we're going to put right sides together and we're going to pin all the way around our circle. So what's great about this is that I love circles because they always fit perfectly together and you don't really have to do much to them. Like, as far as fitting them into one another, like you might have to do with some other clothing pattern pieces or like squares. And you might notice that I actually have a little line of stitching right here. It's because I didn't have enough fabric to make this beret pattern, um, at least one big piece. So I actually put two together and just stitched right along this edge. So once you have your main fabric pinned, you're going to do the exact same thing to your lining fabric. So you'll want the right side of your fabric facing you. So the pretty side <laughs> facing you. 
And then the same thing with your um, bottom edge, you're going to put the right side facing away, so right sides together. So you can see that the right side is poking through here. And then you're just gonna pin all the way around in a circle like you did for the other part of your beret, the outer part. This is just the lining part, which is great, right? I love when patterns are just kind of like same Z's everywhere. <laughs> you just do the exact same thing for the lining and the face. It makes it so much easier. So I'm gonna pin, pin, pin. And now that both of them are secure, we're going to go ahead and sew using a half an inch seam allowance, which is um, about 1.3 centimeters. So just going all the way around this circle and all the way around this circle. So I'm lining it up with half an inch mark right here, lowering my foot and I'm going to start sewing. Just remember to remove your pins as you go. And don't forget to back stitch as well. Now you can take this as quickly or as um, slowly as you would like. I did not, I'm realizing I didn't cut my circles perfectly, but that's okay because all of this excess is going to just be hidden later on on the inside of our beret anyway. And you're going to do this for the main fabric beret, like the outer part of your beret, as well as the lining. So we're going to remove our beret pattern or our main beret and snip all of your excess threads. And I am using a different colored thread on the back side of my beret just so that it's easier to see later on. And then we're going to repeat the same steps with your lining. Removing your pins as you go. Now do the same thing. Remove your pattern pieces and snip your threads. Ooh. And now we're finished sewing with this. We can go on to the next step. Alrighty. So for this next part of our project, we are going to trim around the um, outer edge of our circle for both the main fabric and the lining. Then we're going to clip into the circle. So this is so that when we turn our beret right side out, there's no puckering on the actual circle because all this fabric has to go somewhere, right? And it's a little bit bunched up as a circle. <laughs> so if anyone has ever made like a collar or something rounded and you didn't clip, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So. I'm just going to trim about half of the seam allowance off all the way around. Oop. And then I'm gonna compost this since it's all wool. And then I'm going to take my mini snips and I'm going to snip all the way around the circle, just doing little teeny tiny snips like this. So I just want to make sure that I'm not accidentally clipping into the seam at all. I'm just giving it a little bit more room to actually open up when we flip our berets right side out. So this is a bit tedious, so feel free to take breaks in between. Or hey, if you are super speed, you can just power on through it. I'm turning it around so that you guys can maybe see a little bit better since the, oh, I lost my stitching place. Since the stitches are a different color on this side. And this part is totally optional as far as the snipping goes. It's not really something that you absolutely have to do. I just found that it makes it a little bit easier and more um, professional looking when I take the time to add these snips. A 
awesome. So once you're done with your main fabric, we're going to do the exact same thing for our lining. And we are done with clipping. Now we're going to bring our iron and ironing board out and press these seams open. This part is totally optional. However, I think it adds a really nice clean finish to the outside of the beret once you flip it right side out. So what I'm doing is I have a ham here. I am going to actually slide my beret over the ham and in sections I'm going to work at pressing this seam open. Now I know that that sounds really tedious and tiring and it is <laughs> but again if you want a really nice professional finish to your, gar um, to your beret then this is definitely a step I would take and you only have to do it for the outer beret since the inner beret isn't going to be seen um, and if you are working with something like wool or a felt, then it should press open nice and easily. And you're just going to work in little sections until you make it all the way around. Alrighty, there we go. So now that everything's been trimmed and clipped, what we're going to do is flip our main beret to the right side. And I'm just smoothing out along the inside here, just to kind of make it as nice and even as possible, but we'll go and press it a little bit more later as well. Then what we want to do is put the right side of our lining uh, touching the right side of our beret pattern. So to do this, I'm just going to slide the beret pattern into this hole <laughs> of the lining. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect right now because this is just for us, the purposes of sewing. Um, and we will, make everything nice and smooth later. So right now I have my holes sort of lined up. You wanna make sure that you get them actually properly lined up and just pin all the way around with some pins. Oh, it's coming together so quickly. We're almost done. We literally only have like one machine stitch left and then some hand stitching and then you are going to be on your way with your own beret. Alrighty. So I have pinned all the way around my circles, my two circles, um, inner circles I should say. And this is ready to be sewn. The only thing that I wanna add is a mark for myself that is about an inch to two inches wide where I'm not going to sew. This is so that we can flip our beret right side out through this little opening and then we'll sew it up later. So here's my, my little opening right here. So I think that's about two inches. All right, so we are ready to sew our inner circles. I'm going to start right at one of my markings. I'm going to slide it on over here and I'm using a half an inch seam allowance again, which is again around 1.3 centimeters. And I'm going to remove my pin and start sewing. Back stitch and then sewing all the way around. Trying to stay at half an inch without getting everything caught up. 
All right, and then we're gonna snip and I will meet you at the next step. What we're gonna do next is clip all around the inside of our circle here. And I've chosen to do just little snips um, for this entire project, mainly through trial and error. I found that when I did the little triangular tr snips, it created a lot more um, rigid edges when I flipped my beret out, which is not what I was going for. I was hoping to have all the edges be as smooth as possible. Um, so that's why I've chosen to trim like this. So I'm just gonna go all the way around, making sure I don't accidentally catch my seam, my stitching seam, because then I'd have to go re-sew it all over again. Let's see, clip it. Awesome. So once you have everything all clipped, it's time to flip. <laughs> clip and flip. So we're going to take it from the opening that we left in our beret, and you're just like a pillow, going to slowly pull everything through this inside portion. How funny would it have been if I had sewn my beret pattern backwards? I have done that before. So this takes just a little finagling, but yay, look at that. So we're going to put our lining into our beret, our main fabric and just smooth out the edges as best as possible. And I like to give this a nice little press here and now because I wanna feel accomplished even though we are literally near the end. As I go around, I'm making sure, as I press, I'm making sure that um, I'm flattening out the edge as much as possible so that it's nice and smooth and I'm slowly picking up my iron and placing it in the next spot. Sorry if the steam is a little bit much. Wool really likes steam, so I'm gonna give it what it likes. Alrighty, so we're going to grab some pins and this little opening right here needs to be closed. So we're just gonna make sure that we're hiding our seam allowances and the raw edges and I'm just going to pin it closed. So you can definitely sew this closed with a sewing machine but I prefer doing it with a needle and thread um, just because it's a nice clean finish. However if you decide to do it with a sewing machine I doubt that anyone will ever notice especially if you position your beret towards the back of your head um, or at least the opening portion towards the back of your head. I don't actually know where this wound up because I just kind of drew it arbitrarily. Um, so <laughs> uh, I don't even know if it's towards the back. Oh, it's towards the side. That's not so bad. All right. So now I'm just going to whip stitch this closed. Et voila, you have successfully created your very own bijou beret. Yay! Time to celebrate with a cafe au lait. I hope you all enjoyed working on this beret with me today. I know that I had such a blast. Um, if you would like to share your finished projects, feel free to tag us on Instagram at either 
at World Rock Tales or at Untitled Thoughts. Um, you can also use the hashtag UT Bijou Beret. And until next time, bon couture.